on this episode of Hitchhiking with the Harveys. Nelson Monti and I visit the Lethbridge Viaduct, which is the largest railway structure in the world. <laughs> but not before we ran into a herd of 200 goats and a dutiful working herding dog. Then we head over to Head Smashed in Buffalo Jump. Pretty cool name, right? This is one of the world's largest, oldest, and best preserved buffalo jumps. Our last stop is to visit the Frank Slide, Canada's deadliest slide. So then we're coming up to a viaduct and look at all these guys. Look at the kids. With a herd of 200 goats to watch, this working dog was busy. The farmer and dog owner were hired by the city to help herd the goats owned by local Hutterites through parkland and to allow goats to eat away at these yellow flowers or weeds, also known as leafy spurge, which is enjoyed more than alfalfa. Did you know that goats eat less than 20% grass in their diet? I didn't. We found out that herding is the same of 200 goats or hundreds and hundreds of cattle. But the goats are a little less action for the dog than the cattle. So it's like a vacation, sort of. Now on to the viaduct. Of a total length of 1,624 meters and a width of 33 meters, the Lethbridge Viaduct, commonly known as a high-level bridge, is a railway trestle bridge over the Old Man River in Lethbridge, Alberta. Constructed between 1907 and 1909 by the Canadian Pacific Railway, it is the largest railway structure in Canada and the largest of its type in the world, and is still regularly maintained and used over a century since its construction. And then we were off to Head Smash and Buffalo Jump, which is a buffalo jump located where the foothills of the Rocky Mountains begin to rise from the prairie 18 kilometers west of Fort McLeod, Alberta, Canada. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and home of a museum of the Blackfoot culture. So here we are at the top of Head Smashed in Buffalo Jump. The cliffs you see right here where the uh, natives uh, corralled buffalo and they jumped off those cliffs there. And you take a close look, there's a marmot sunning himself right there. And another one over there. Yeah, one male, one female. Just chilling. So one of the tips that we'll probably say, well, they'll tell you when you go to purchase your ticket. First of all, if you're a Canadian military, carry your seat one card, your ID doesn't count, just saying. Yeah, apparently, <laughs> no, showing that you're actually in the Canadian Armed Forces does not count to being showing your military. They have to have the number off your CF1 card. Yes, so if you don't have it with you, take a picture of it so they can scan it or what have you, but definitely do that. But what we have to do is go all the way to the top. So the tour actually starts from all the way to the top where we're standing right now, which is quite a few flights of stairs or an elevator ride. And then you work your way down into the museum. It's quite the bunker, actually. But yeah, the views up here are spectacular. You got a little bit of everything. You got prairie, you got plains, you have mountains, yeah, the Rockies. Mountains over there, where all the foothills. And way out in the distance, wind turbines. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can see it with this, but uh, turbines everywhere. Because you have to go in from the bottom and then walk past all of the uh, displays, the displays and, yeah. in the museum up the stairs or elevators if you took the uh, choose we did, the elevators. We got a workout today. We did the stairs, we did but this, we also beat totally the crowd, stairs. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a big uh, tour bus coming in just as we got here. Like, no, nope, gotta get ahead of them. And we got here 10 minutes after they opened, so FYI, come early. Yep. Uh, but yeah, you come all the way up to the top, and then you work your way back down inside. And it is the prairies, so it will be a little breezy most of the time it's here. It's nice. This, this is June. This is mid-June right now, and it's gorgeous out, although breezy, but it's quite nice. Yeah, that's why this area of the world has some of the best uh, constant speeds of wind anywhere on the planet. That's why there's always wind turbines. Wind turbines. <laughs> in southern Alberta, hunters used head smashed in buffalo jump for over 6,000 years up until the 1800s. Over time, hundreds of thousands of bison bones were left at the bottom of the cliff, which formed a deposit about 12 meters deep. Flooring is buffalo themed or bison themed. Look at the ground. Everywhere you walk. 
Is there, there might be a theme here. Ooh, I think so. Opened in 1987, the Interpreter Center of Head Smash and Buffalo Jump was built into the ancient sandstone cliffs in naturalistic fashion. By the time the panic-stricken lead buffalo topped the short rise before the cliff and saw the edge, it was too late. Its own momentum and the herd behind pressed it over the edge. This is a great museum to visit. Absolutely recommend. We both enjoyed it. Of course, Monty did as well. So here we are at the Frank Slide. There's the Interpretive Center. I've been through here a couple of times. I never stopped in at the actual Interpretive Center. Didn't really even know there was one. Apparently, it was the most deadliest slide in Canadian history. The entire side of that mountain came down and buried the town of Frank. See the highway that goes through the, where the slide is? Excavated out the, the trains, train tracks. This is right at the start of the Crow's Nest Pass. Highway 3 in Alberta. April 29th, 1903, around 44 million cubic meters of limestone rock slid down Turtle Mountain burying between 70 to 90 of the town's residents. The primary cause of the Frank Slide was Turtle Mountain's unstable structure. All the rock layers stacked like slippery playing cards simply slid into the valley. Uh, these movements happened in places where the, uh, the layering was parallel to the eastward slope of the mountain. Similar movements could result in future slides. Apparently, the Frank Slide was not remotely the largest slide in, in the Canadian Rockies. There was one slide over by Mount Assiniboine that apparently was 33 times bigger. Scientists figured there was over a billion cubic meters of rock came down. Apparently Alberta's three deadliest disasters occurred in the shadow of Turtle Mountain. Two mine explosions and the landslide claimed over 300 lives between 1903 and 1914. Thanks for hitching a ride with us on our three-part road trip through British Columbia and Alberta. We'd also like to say our hearts and thoughts go to everybody affected in the fires in Jasper. We didn't go there on this trip, but it's not very far away at all from the places that we've taken you. Next time on our channel, we take you to the Baltic countries, thanks to Universal Yums. There's a bouquet. Maple bacon. Very, very bacony. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, these are good. I'm never a big fan of sunflower seeds. They take too much work. Let's have a crocodile fight. <laughs> ah, I won! I won! <laughs> I'm relishing in it. That's true. It's ketchuping <laughs> it, not relish. The yum bag. It melts in your mouth. My fingers are sticky. And yeah, fresh. I'm gonna be in a chocolate shock. Mm, that's good. I don't really know what to say about that. I'm just gonna hit that sea salt. It's like cereal that you put in a bowl and if you don't eat it in two minutes, it gets a little mushy. Yeah.